what God's doing. Amen. Let's, let's give Him praise. If you have your Bibles, let's open them to the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and beginning in verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 beginning in verse 35. The Bible said, Cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul, can the church shout Amen. Amen. The Bible said, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Brothers and sisters, we're in a life and death struggle today. And in this life and death struggle, the devil is doing his best to shake us loose from our faith in God. To destroy our confidence in God. And he comes in different ways in an attempt to do that. Did you know that he has used this very situation that we had last week in Connecticut to shake the faith of many people. As a matter of fact, some of the headlines last week read like this. Why would God allow this to happen? You know, those are some of the headlines. Probably were some headlines in people's minds. If there was a God, how could He allow this to happen? There is an attack on our faith and our confidence in God. First of all, the devil would like for you and me as well as anyone and everyone to question the very existence of God. To try and throw things in our face. If there is a God, how could this happen? No, oh, I hope, I pray that you and me, right here in this church today, have our minds settled. We have our hearts established. We have our feet on the rock and there is absolutely no question in our mind, in our spirit, but what there is a God. And if you believe there is a God and you're sure of it, stand and give Him a hand right now. Come on! Think that made the devil mad? Give the Lord another hand then. Come on. Woo! Woo! I know that I know that I know He's real. And there is a God in heaven. Oh, you may be seated here this morning. I'm glad that we can testify to God's existence today from our hearts and from this church that we have no question about the existence of God. 
We know that He's real regardless of what happens in this world. But did you know the next area where the devil tries to shake our faith and our confidence is just a little bit under trying to deny the existence of God, but yet it's just as deadly as not believing there is a God. And that is this. If the devil can convince you or me that, oh yes, there's a God, but He doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about you. He's not listening to you. He doesn't hear you. He's not going to help you. You see, brothers and sisters, if the devil can even get us to believe that, we're just about in bad shape as that woman. He's deceived into thinking there is no God. Because how can God help you if you can't believe it, He will help you. The Bible makes it clear in Hebrews 11 and 6, but he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. Recognize the attacks of the devil. He's trying to shake your confidence and your faith in God and He's trying to do it from every perspective and on every level. I believe the devil would be just real happy even though he couldn't get you to believe that there is no God. If he can just get you to believe that God's not concerned about you. That God's not going to help you. Brothers and sisters, we've got to remember God loves us. Amen. And God's not based His love upon your merits. But God has based His love upon His character. He is love to the purest and greatest degree. He loves you. I walked in one of those cells last week and I was sharing this same thought. God loves you whether you're in jail or you're out of jail. God loves you whether you're in church or out of church. God loves you, my brothers and sisters. And one of those inmates spoke up while I was speaking and said, God sent you here today. That's what we needed. Amen? That's what we needed. Brothers and sisters, I believe that's what we all need is a wake-up call, a reminder that God loves us, that God is concerned about us, that God wants to help us. He hasn't pushed you over in the corner and forgot about you. And don't ever let the devil convince you that he has. God loves you. He's reaching out to all of us today to help us as we go through this life. The important thing is this. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your confidence in God. Now all of you testified a while ago, I looked to me like everybody, that God is real, that God exists. There is a God. You stood up and gave Him a hand, didn't you? Well, let's back up one more. Let's give the devil another little fit here this morning. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and just whip him one more time. If you believe God loves you individually, by name, knows you, cares about you, wants to help you, stand and give him another hand here today. here for just a moment. I just, I just sense that we all struggle with that fact sometimes. Can I get an amen? amen? Now we may not want to admit it. I found it's a lot easier for me to pray for other people to be healed than it is for me to pray for me to be healed. Amen. I tell you, when, you, when you're struggling whether it's health issues, finance issues, family issues, job issues, 
church issues. It doesn't matter. When you're struggling, that devil jumps right in the middle of it, doesn't he? Will you reach over and lay your hand on your brother and your sister right now? Just lay it on their shoulder there beside you. Someone beside you. Lay your hand on their shoulder. Pray right now, Father, help my brother, help my sister, help me, help us to hold to this great truth that you do love me and you do love my brother and you do love my sister and you want to help us individually right here today. Help our confidence to be strong, Heavenly Father. Help our confidence to be strong. Oh, yes. Can somebody shout amen? amen. How about hallelujah one time? Give her another hand. Come on. Woo! You may be seated here this morning. Hebrews 10 and 23, the Bible said, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful that promised. <laughs> Glory be to God. The promises of God are sure, faithful, true. Whatever God has said, God will stand behind it. God will back it up. That's why I like what He said in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him what? Should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. That's, oh, I'm glad He stands behind that. He loves you and me. And He has provided salvation for us. He is faithful, that promise. Now, here's the important thing. We can't afford to waver on that. We've got to be steadfast. You know, when I think of somebody wavering, I think of somebody that's easily swayed, easily pushed. Brothers and sisters, I'm afraid we've all been there somewhere along the way where that enemy came against us in the situations of life that we happen to be dealing with in that moment and he began to push us, he began to shove us, and we begin to give. But the Lord is saying to us today, hold fast. Get a grip on your faith. You can't let it depend on what's happening around you. And I believe the Holy Spirit is taking us a step farther. You can't even let your faith depend on what's happening to you, much less what's around you. Amen. You've got to keep that faith strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 12 through 13, Paul, last letter that is known in the Bible that he wrote to, to young Timothy before he was beheaded. He said, For the cause, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. Do you know whom you believed in today? You know what Paul was saying here? As he opened up, he said, I'm suffering some things. I'm in prison. Paul knew that his race was just about over. He knew that they'd soon be coming for him to take his life. But he said, nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Brothers and sisters, have you put it all in his hands if you have you put it in the best place you could ever possibly have it in the hands of God Amen. <laughs> Amen. oh I tell you been a few years back now I put my life in his hands I put my life in his hands I put my soul in his hands I surrendered my life to him Teenage boy. 
I surrendered my life to Him. We've got a new teenager here today. Amen. Those are some of the most important years of your life, by the way. Those teenage years. But in my teenage years, thank God, I surrendered my heart and life to Jesus. Do you know what I found? I found that it's better than Fort Knox. Do you know what I found? I found that it's better than the Federal Reserve. Do you know what I found? It's better than stocks and bonds. Do you know what I found? It's better than houses and land. Do you know what I found? It's better than family and friends. I put my life and my soul in the hands of Almighty God. I'm persuaded that He's able to keep it and take care of it. Under that day. Do you can we share that confidence with Paul today? We're in the hands of God. We may not understand why tragedy comes. We may not understand why hardships come and persecution. Paul said, I'm suffering all of these things, but nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. You know, some people would think if they were going through what Paul was going through, they'd have to hang their head in shame, but not Paul. My life is in you, Lord, my hope. Is in you, Lord. In you, it's in you. Amen. How many is glad you've got your hands, your life in the hands of God? Got your life in the hands of God. You believe you're in better hands with God than you all are all stage <laughs> By the way, I've got all state insurance and they've been good to me through the years. But my life's not in all state. My life is in Christ and in His hands. And my faith is in Him today. Oh, praise be to our God. Listen, Paul reading on saying in verse 13, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, brothers and sisters, I believe this. Not only is the devil trying to rip your faith away from you, he's trying to rip the Word of God right out of your heart. Not only is he trying to rip your faith, the Word, out of your life, he's trying to rob you of the love of Almighty God which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, the devil is doing his best to destroy God's people. But we've got to what? Hold fast. Glory be to God. Get a grip and hold on. It's going to be worth it all one day. Here's the beauty of this. God's got a rewards plan. I don't know, if, if you've ever had a credit card, every now and then you'll get a solicitation. Join the rewards program. You know, it only costs you $60 a year to be a part of the rewards program. Then you get points and you get prizes and you get... And you know really what it usually boils down to, you get about 1% of everything you spend. And then you pay... What you spend back with 24% interest. So in the long run, the rewards program is for them, not for you. But brothers and sisters, here's the beauty of God's reward program. It's sure. It's established in the heavens. God has a reward for those who will hold on to their faith. And it won't be another point. It won't, it won't be another free toaster that you never needed to start with. It's going to be eternal life. Oh, listen. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verses 35 through 37. He said, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be what? Great. And ye shall be children of the highest. 
For He is kind unto the unthankful and to the... to the evil also. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. If you believe those words from the mouth of Jesus Christ in the New Testament are still good for us today, shout Amen! Amen. That's how God's people are supposed to live. In love, in mercy, in forgiveness, in kindness, without judgment, without condemnation. Brothers and sisters, we're getting close to the end of this race. God, keep us from being disqualified before we get down to the end. We have a great reward. Let's hold on to our faith and let's live for Jesus. Let's love our enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. For our reward shall be great. Now here's what I find about Christian living. After you've done everything that you know to do, you've done everything that's right, then you've got to have some patience. Amen. The Bible said there in Hebrews 10 and 37, for yet Excuse me, verse 36, he said, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. I think that's where we all struggle sometimes. Can I get an amen? amen. You know, sometimes it's almost like, Now, Lord, I've done what you told me to do. What's happening? What you waiting on? Let's get this thing going. How many is glad God's not in a hurry? Wave at me. You say, Brother Gamble, why should I be glad God's not in a hurry? Because most of us would get left behind if He was. God's not in a hurry. Oh, we have a great reward if we'll just have that patience and endure. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verses 16 through 19. This is a chapter that's dealing with last day events. And Jesus said this, And ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. Listen to verse 19. In your patience possess ye your souls. Brothers and sisters, we've got to be reminded here today that it's not going to be all peaches and cream as we go through this life. As a matter of fact, not everybody's going to love us and a lot of them's not even going to like us. We're going to have enemies. We're going to have family members, it said. Friends, people that are near and dear to us. The Bible said that they will betray us. But in our patience, that's where we're going to possess our soul and keep our victory. Be patient with God, my brother and sister, because He is patient with us. I know He's a patient God. Else I would have been burning in hell a long time ago. God is patient. Let's see what the Bible says about it in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 7-10. through 10. The Bible said, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. But is what? Long-suffering to usward. Uh, no, oh, I, do you like this part? 
not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Can somebody shout, Hallelujah! God doesn't want you to go to hell. God doesn't want your family to go to hell. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He is willing for everybody to be saved. He is long-suffering. That's patient with us. He is patient with us. But listen to verse 10. But, of, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Brothers and sisters, God has put up with this planet for the last 2,000 years. We find when the early, the early apostles and church fathers penned the great words of God, helped pen the New Testament, what we find them saying are things like this. For that spirit of Antichrist is already at work. Don't you know that that was 2,000 years ago? That spirit of Antichrist has been working for the last 2,000 years. But where are we at right now? You and me are a part of a generation that's seeing things that no generation since the creation of the world has ever seen. You and me. I believe that we can safely say, as one of the New Testament writers said, it is the last hour. The last hour is what we're facing in this end time. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, if you're wondering why He didn't come yesterday, it was in hopes that one of your family members would be saved today. That's the only thing that's holding the Lord back, brothers and sisters, is His compassion and His patience and His long-suffering with this world. Oh, man. I'm glad He didn't come while I was in sin. I'm glad He didn't come while I was lost. Oh, but He is coming and He's coming unexpectedly. And He's coming back with His people. If I understand the Scriptures right, and I know I understand this to be contrary to what some people believe. But my understanding is this. The rapture is not the second coming. The rapture is an escape for God's people from the great tribulation period. I believe that's why Jesus also said, Pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming upon the earth. Oh yes. Listen in Jude chapter 1 verses 14 through 15. The Bible said, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these. Can you imagine that? Go back all the way to Enoch. Go all the way back to the early creation of the world. Enoch himself testified, prophesied about the end time events. And you know, I like Enoch. How many remembers old brother Enoch? The Bible said he had another good testimony. He had that testimony that he pleased God. And you know what happened one day? I just try to visualize it in my own little pea-sized brain. I, I see Enoch and God walking along together one day. I don't know, they may have been walking along by the river. May have been walking along by the Sea of Galilee. I don't know where they were at. But I do know this. God just probably looked over at Enoch and said, How would you like to go home with me today? And you know what I believe Enoch said? Let's go. And you know what the Bible said? Enoch 
was not for God to come because he had that testimony. He pleased God. But listen to his prophecy. In Jude 14 and 15, he said, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. It won't be long. I believe the Lord's going to catch the church out. Amen. In the moment, the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be called up. We're going to be changed. We're going to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But at the end of that tribulation period, the Lord is going to saddle up that big white horse. Somebody, somebody right now, just try and visualize it with me. King of kings. Lord of Lords. Hey, by the way, this is December. By the way, Christmas is the celebration of Jesus' birthday. This month we're celebrating when He was born some 2,000 years ago. But brothers and sisters, that's not the only thing I've got to celebrate. I'm glad He came the first time, but I'm also celebrating the next coming back to this world. Brothers and sisters, the first time He came as the Lamb of God, as a sacrifice for our sins. That meant He was crucified. That meant He was beaten. That meant He was abused and suffered. That means that He shed His blood on this earth for you and me. That's how He came the first time. But thank God after they crucified Him and killed Him on that cross, they could not keep Him in the grave. On the third day, He rose from the dead. And today, He's alive and at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Do you believe that? Shout Amen. amen. Well, I, oh yes, I'm happy about the first coming. But I'm happy about the second coming. Will you go with me back to heaven for a moment? I got Jesus on his stallion and left him, and we took off another direction. Amen. But will you go with me for just a moment back to heaven? Will you focus it just in your mind the best you can? As a child of God, you already have your new body. You have your robes of righteousness. Hopefully you've got a crown and you're gathered around Christ, and all of a sudden, He saddles up on that beautiful white horse. And I can almost hear Him as that songwriter would say, Saddle up your horses. Come on. You say, wait a minute, preacher. I don't ride horses. You will that day. You'll ride one that day if you're coming back. Amen. And don't worry about it. You'll enjoy it. Amen. Jesus will saddle up and He's going to tell His children to saddle up behind Him. Did you know that suddenly back here on planet Earth, the heavens are going to roll back like a scroll? Woo! Can somebody visualize what's getting ready to happen? You think Christmas was wonderful. You ain't seen nothing yet. Because the next time, He won't come as a lamb. He's coming as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's coming and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. Amen. Whew, brother.
brothers and sisters, if you watch much news, if you get on the internet, this world right now is full of people that can't do anything but talk dirty about Jesus. Talk dirty about Jesus. Talk dirty about God. Be little, make fun, deny His existence, bound by their own carnal and sinful lust. They refuse to even acknowledge His existence. But on that day, on that day, He will come back to execute judgment upon all the ungodly. Their ungodly deeds, their ungodly words, their ungodly lifestyle. How many believe Jesus is going to make a lot of folks eat crow that day? Amen. You know, I can't take any joy in anybody being lost, but do you know where my joy is at? That everybody is going to have to admit He is Lord. How many rejoices in that? Amen. Nobody's going to get by on that. Some of the most hardened atheists of the history of this world are going to have to bow their knee before Him. And acknowledge He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. Amen. How many has let Him be the Lord of your life? Shout Amen. Amen. Are you in His hands? Shout Amen. Amen. Well, we've got to hold on a little bit longer, children. We've got to hold on a little bit longer. Be patient. This thing's about over. Stand with me as we go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. The Bible puts it like this, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Can somebody shout Amen? Amen. sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new and this child you deliver will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man baby boy become a storm with his hand did you know your baby boy has walked rages to run when you kiss your little baby you kiss the face of God
was broken, mind was bended. He became sin, now I am clean. The cross he carried bore my burden. The nails that held him set me free. His life for mine, his life for mine. How could it ever be that he would die? God's son would die to save. for mine His scars of suffering brought me healing He spilled His blood to fill my soul His crown of thorns made me royalty His sorrow gave me joy untold, His life for mine, His life for mine. How could it ever be that He would die, God's Son would die? Bye. 